And once again, welcome to our daily prayers. This sort of wintry time of year, um, my study can get quite cold. We don't have the radiators on all day. And one trick I've been learning is the part of me that gets coldest is my feet. And so I wear an extra pair of socks underneath my slippers. Um, so there's a little tip. I'm sure most of you have sussed it out already, but a tiny little detail of my life as we begin. And as I'm sitting here, it's relatively cold and so I'm all uh, warmed up with two pairs of socks. So that's at the beginning of this week. Let's come to the Lord together now. O Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and for ever. Amen. And so here we go. Uh, this is First Thessalonians chapter 1, and we're going to do it from verse 7. And so you became a model to all the believers in Macedonia and Achaia. The Lord's message rang out from you, not only in Macedonia and Achaia. Your faith in God has been known everywhere. Therefore, we do not need to say anything about it, for they themselves report what kind of reception you gave us. They tell how you turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God. It's lovely the way the way they're living is the very thing which causes the ripples. Not simply the dry doctrine, but actually they can see it lived out. And what they can see is something to do with idols. Now, it's very easy to think um, idols are just oh, Old Testament Bible things of golden statues and things. Um, and we don't have anything like that these days. But I remember an African person saying, actually, in the West, they do have idols. They each day. They congregate round them at the same time. They have a special place in the house. And each time they spend sometimes several hours in front of it. Of course, what the African was referring to was our TV. Now, it does make you think and there's nothing wrong with watching television. But if it rules our life, if everything is dominated by what's on TV, then at some stage it's taking our energy away from serving God and into, let's face it, worshipping it. And in that sense, we all have things which we allow to draw our attention away from God towards an idol. It could be holidays, even particular friends who we put up on a pedestal. Obviously, it can be money. It can be our looks and reputation. It could be a whole load of different things. I wonder, maybe it's worth this morning thinking, what are my idols? Things which divert my attention and take a lot of my energy which could have been placed to serve God. Nothing wrong in looking good, looking forward to holidays, enjoying some TV. It's when it takes a considerable part of our energy that we have the danger signs. Maybe you'd like to reflect for a moment now. Oh, excuse me. What are, what are those things in your life? And so as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. And so may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, 
and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and for evermore. Amen.